Now, in Ethernet, the, um, the difference between a reservoir and a tank, reservoir and tank, is that the reservoir surface elevation is always going to be whatever I put here in the total head, no matter what. It has an unlimited amount of water in it. It will always have that. Whereas tanks are is actually tracking what's in there and the elevation in the tank will change. There is a volume of water in there that when it comes in or out changes the tank level. So this one just has zero head. It's a fixed grade node. And there's a bunch of other things I can do on here, but I'm gonna ignore all that for now. And next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to add a bunch of junctions. So I go up to the add junction circle. I'm going to skip over the pump for now. And I'm just going to add all of these junctions. Now, on here you can see these little squares. Um, those are telling you what the node number is. We're not going to worry about matching our node ID numbers to these node ID numbers. Um, they're just on this diagram for, for reference purposes. So kind of ignore those, but every time you see a square, that's where a junction's gonna go. And it doesn't matter that it's not perfect. I'm just gonna go, I know there's four, 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 and then these two down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one down here, one down here, and I don't need to do one up by where the tank is, and I don't need to do the ones that are over by where the pump is. Now all of those, if I go back up to my arrow and I click through them, all of them should have an elevation of 25. And you can see all of them have a base demand of zero but when I look up here, it says water distribution system demands all junctions four and a half gallons per minute. Now a demand means it's like when we were doing Hayes and Williams and there was an arrow just leaving, leaving our system with a flow, that's a demand. It's taking water out of the program, it's leaving. Someone's turned on their tap and it's leaving the system. So I need all of these to have 4.5 for the demand. So I could go through and I can just click one and I can hit 4.5 and then I could click on another one and it'll be zero and I could change that one to 4.5. If I want to change multiple at a time, um, I can't just like drag a window like you wish you could. You have to go up to edit and you can do select region and I can draw a little region around here. And then when I right click, it'll close that box. And then I can go up to edit and I can go to group edit. And I can say for all junctions within the outlined area, I can replace the base demand with 4.5. This will let me further refine it if I only want certain nodes to be changed. Um, I can re replace a lot of different properties on there. I hit OK. It says 14 junctions were updated. So now when I click through these, they should all have 4.5 for the demand. All right, let's throw the pump and the tank in. So next step is um, the, let's do the tank. So that's up here, the add tank. That one is just up here and I'm just gonna plop it down. And I can go over to the properties for the tank. Tanks have a little bit more uh, properties associated with them than um, most of the things in here. And so 
I will go through this again next week because it's important for your project and I want to remind you of it. But just for now, uh, I want to talk through a little bit of what the, what elevation, initial level, minimum level, maximum level, and diameter mean for a tank. So elevation is the elevation of the ground where the tank is. So this could be an elevated tank like a water tower or it could be a ground level tank. The elevation is the elevation on the ground. The level, it's not an elevation. So it's not relative to mean sea level, it's level relative to the ground level. So if I say an initial level of 10, that's saying what is the water level, the initial water level relative to the ground? Which in this case, if the ground's at 25, that means the initial water elevation is 35. Okay. I can set a minimum level in the tank. If it's a ground level tank, maybe my minimum level is zero, zero feet above the ground level. And then I can set a maximum level where the top of the tank is. So this is constraining what the water level in the tank can be. And then the diameter is going to, tr is going to be the only way that the tank knows um, how quickly is the level moving up and down when volumes of water come in or come out? Everything is modeled as a cylindrical tank. So if you want other shaped tanks, you have to do some fancy um, stuff later on with the uh, volume curve, which we, is kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing. You can model things that aren't cylinders, but by default, it's a cylinder. So whatever the diameter you give it is will affect how quickly the level comes up and down. We'll see later that we're, we have two ways of running simulations in EPANET. One is a steady state simulation. In a steady state simulation, it's not a time series. It's just kind of run the model and tell me what's going on at this time. And in those kinds of models, all that matters is what you set the initial level in the tank to because it's going to run the model assuming the initial level in the tank. A time series simulation is the other type where we're literally going to run the model for a while. Some water might leave the tank. Then at a later time, it's going to do another time step and it's going to re-update all the nodes based on the new level in the tank and so on. So then it's actually tracking the volume in the tank and it matters what you put for the diameter. For this purposes, we're only going to be doing a steady state simulation. So it doesn't matter really what we put for the diameter, but uh, it does have one on there that the diameter is 44 feet. So we can put that in for the tank there. This says the, uh, <laughs> this one's a little, uh, odd in that it says starting elevation is 150 feet. Um, the initial elevation, the ground elevation is 25 feet. And so because it says starting elevation, then if that's really true, the level, the initial level we would put here is 125. because the, uh, the ground level is already at 25 feet. If the starting elevation is at 150, then the initial level is 125. We need to make sure the maximum level is higher than that, or it might give us an error. So we'll put that up at 150. Honestly, I'm, I'll need to check in a minute. I can't remember if this is right. And it's really supposed to be 150, 125 as my initial level, or if I'm supposed to set this to 150, but I'll check in a minute before we're done. Okay, so that one's good. I'm now remembering that actually I do need to add two junctions over here on either side of the pump. So let's go back to add junction and put a couple here. All right, now we're going to switch to pipes. We've got all our junctions that we need in the model. They, I think they all have the right properties, but we can double check later on. We're going to go up to add pipe. 
And let's just start by adding, say, this pipe, 